Capacitors are essentially devices that allow us to store electric charge. Now, capacitors are generally found within electric circuits, and electric circuits are closed pathways that consist of conducting wires in which electrons are able to flow from one location in that wire to a different location in that wire. Now, capacitors can be connected relative to one another in two main ways. They can either be connected in parallel to one another within a circuit or they can be connected in series to one another within that circuit. In this lecture, we're going to discuss capacitors connected in parallel relative to one another. Now, if we take two capacitors and we place them in parallel to one another, that will look something like like this. So let's suppose we have the following electric circuit. We have our two capacitors which are connected in parallel to one another as shown. So the capacitance on this capacitor is given by C1 and the capacitance on this capacitor is given by C2. Now when we take a battery and place it within our electric circuit as shown, what we're essentially doing is we're creating an electric potential difference and a voltage difference and because of this voltage difference electrons will begin to flow and will begin to accumulate on this side of our parallel plates so remember electrons travel from the lower potential to the higher potential so VA this plate of the battery has the lower potential and so electrons will begin flowing from this location and they will will tend to flow to this plate. So they will try to move along the following circuit, they will reach this intersection, they will split, some of those electrons will end up on this plate, and some of those electrons will end up on this plate. Now electrons cannot actually travel from this plate to this plate because of the separation between these two plates. So we have a separating distance and electrons cannot actually jump from from this plate to this plate. But because there will be a collection of electrons, those electrons will push the electrons on these plates towards this higher potential voltage. And so electrons from these two plates within our power plate capacitors will travel in this direction, they will collect in this intersection, and will travel towards this voltage, which is at the higher voltage. So electrons travel from VB to VA, from the lower potential to the higher potential. Now, the potential difference of the battery is given by taking VB and subtracting VA. Now, why exactly are these capacitors called in parallel? So, these capacitors are said to be in parallel because the left-hand plates reach the voltage VA and the right-hand plates reach the voltage VB. So, this plate, these two plates of our two parallel plate capacitors reach the voltage given by VB and these plates reach the voltage given by VA. So that means the voltage of these two capacitors will be exactly the same and will equal the voltage of the battery. So once again, the voltage difference across capacitors C1 and C2 is the same and equals to the voltage of our battery. Now, let's examine what happens when our electric charge travels in this direction and reaches this intersection. So when the electric charge enters the intersection as shown here, it actually splits. Some of that charge collects on capacitor C1 and the rest of that charge collects on capacitor given by C2. Now, what exactly is the total charge? Well, let's suppose the total charge as it travels in this region is given by Q. And when it separates, some of that 
Q1 goes to capacitor 1 and the rest, Q2, goes to capacitor Q or goes to capacitor C2. So Q1 is the quantity of electric charge that collects on capacitor 1 and Q2 is the quantity of charge that collects on capacitor C2. Now because Q is equal to CV, we see the total charge Q is equal to C1 multiplied by V1 plus C2 multiplied by V2. So Q1 becomes this and Q2 becomes this. Now, by the definition of capacitors placed in parallel, the voltage V1 must equal to the voltage V2. The voltage across this capacitor is equal to the voltage across this capacitor, which is equal to the voltage found across the battery. So V1 is equal to V2, and let's simply call that V. So Q is equal to C1V plus C2V. Now, we want to answer the following important question. What is the single equivalent capacitor that will hold the same amount, the same quantity of electric charge Q at the same total difference voltage given by V? So, once again, we're essentially trying to determine the capacitance of a single equivalent capacitor that is capable of holding the same quantity of charge across the same voltage as these two capacitors. So, we left off at the following equation. Q is equal to C1V plus C2V. So we can combine these two Vs. So these two Vs appear in these two terms. We can take that out of our equation and we see the total charge Q is equal to V, the voltage across the battery, multiplied by C1 plus C2. So we see the total capacitance of that single equivalent capacitor that will Will replace these two capacitors is equal to C1 plus C2 and that's called that capacitance C equivalent. So C equivalent is equal to C1 plus C2. Now generally speaking whenever we place two, three, four, five, or six or so on capacitors in parallel to find the total capacitance, the equivalent capacitance, we simply sum up all the capacitance of all these capacitors which are placed in parallel with one another. So, what exactly can we conclude about our capacitors which are placed in parallel? Why in the world do we place capacitors in parallel with respect to one another? Well, the purpose of connecting capacitors in parallel is to essentially increase the capacitance so that the more, so that more charge can be stored per unit voltage. So that makes sense because as we increase the number of capacitors in parallel, well, we're increasing the area on which our electric charge can accumulate. The more area we have, the more charge can be stored on those capacitors.